There are concerns around the world of a wider war in the Middle East following news of the deaths of two powerful leaders of Hamas and Hezbollah increases concerns of a wider regional conflict. Among the dead is Ismail Hania, a Hamas leader who had been integral to ceasefire negotiations with Israel. U.S. officials say he was killed by an Israeli airstrike in Iran while attending the inauguration of the new Iranian president. Israel has not commented on his death. But Israel did claim responsibility for a separate strike in the Lebanese capital city of Beirut, which killed a top Hezbollah commander. Lebanon's Ministry of Health says a woman and two children were also killed and more than six dozen people were injured. We have team coverage of all angles of concern in the Middle East. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata is in Jerusalem for us and MTS Tayeb is in Beirut. MTS, let's start with how Hezbollah, Hamas and Iran have responded to these assassinations in Beirut and where you are in Tehran. Yeah, that's right. Here in Beirut, Hezbollah reacting with fury in Gaza and beyond, Hamas reacting with fury, and of course the Iranians reacting with fury as well. But let's focus on Iran for a moment. And the reason uh, the assassination of Ismail Haniya inside Iran is so worrying and so perplexing is because what it's shown is the weaknesses with Iran's own security apparatus. This is a country that knows it's under threat, that knows it has enemies in the region, that knows that Israel is one of its fiercest foes, and yet Israel was able to, in Iranian territory, in Iran's security bubble, target Ismail Haniya while he was there as a guest, a you know, attending that inauguration with the Iranians themselves saying that they will retaliate against Israel for, and I'm quoting here, killing a guest in their own home. But as we've been saying, it's really exposed the weaknesses within Iran's own security. Now, having said all of that, uh, in terms of what kind of a response we can see, I would argue at this moment what we will see is Iran try to root out whatever security lapse led to the killing of Ismail Haniya, uh, and then will take its time to respond. Whereas for Hamas, which of course, as we know, has been engaged in this brutal 10-month conflict with Israel inside Gaza, we'll no doubt see that fighting continue. But the real concern here is that Hamas will withdraw from those ceasefire and hostage release negotiations, negotiations which have been going for many, many months, many hoping that we were close to a breakthrough. But all of that is now hanging by a thread. Yeah, and that's Bye. where I want to bring in Deborah because... Hainia was the political leader of Hamas, as uh, as we just heard from MTS. He was a major player in these negotiations. What are you learning about the impact that his death will have on both the ceasefire and hostage talks? Well, it is a devastating blow. First, let's talk about the hostage families. I mean, they have been waiting for an incredibly long time, nearly 10 months of fighting for some kind of deal and the constant roller coaster, the hopes that are raised and then the hopes that are dashed over and over again. So this latest um, assassination is really throwing another, I mean, Spanner in the works is almost putting it a bit too mildly. You know, when you say the deal, what deal? And I don't mean that flippantly, as devastating it is as it is for the families, but things were already at an impasse. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu toughened his stance on a ceasefire and hostage deal, and that has made things even more difficult. And this could definitely have a negative effect on those ongoing no negotiations. In the West Bank today, a senior Palestinian activist told me that what Israel has done is criminal accusing Israel of assassinating the person they were negotiating that deal with. He asked the question, when you kill the person you negotiate with, what is the intention? And then answered it himself. The intention is to kill any possibility for peace, Lana. Uh, Deborah, I'm going to follow up, though, on when we're talking about negotiations. Obviously, given the situation and the escalating tensions, is there a diplomatic off-ramp for um, making this shadow war that has long played out between Iran and, uh, and Israel something that's more active? Is there a way to cool tensions short of actually having a negotiated deal between Israel and Hamas? 
Well, you have two problems now. On the one hand, you have an escalation in the region. Tensions were already very high. This was a region that was already in turmoil. And now you have a second assassination within hours of the first, and that's only going to raise the temperatures even more. So that's the one problem. On the one side, you have these raised tensions and the possibility of some kind of response. And on the other hand, you have a deal that's all been, you know, but shattered. Um, it was already at a standstill, and this is going to take it even further. Lana? All right. Deborah Pata, MTS Tayeb, thank you both.